Hello and welcome to the Eye on the U podcast, the Miami Herald's Miami Hurricanes podcast. I'm David Wilson. I'm joined, as always, on the other line by Susan Miller Degnan, our Hurricanes beat writer here at the Herald. Susan, what's going on? Well, I just got back from Disney World, so uh, all is all is well. Already enjoying that off-season lifestyle. <laughs> yes, sir, I am. Yep. Uh, obviously, though, it will uh, it'll get busy again here in, in a little bit. Um, we're recording this uh, Friday morning. Uh, Miami season has been done for almost a week now, um, but it is in some ways now the busiest time of the year. Obviously, we are on the sprint toward the early signing period in December. Um, we are uh, portals. The portal transfer portal players can officially start entering that uh, on Monday. Um, and obviously, um, the coaching carousel is already spinning. I saw just a couple of. Uh, couple of minutes before we started recruiting FAU hired Tom Herman. Uh, so they made their splashy hire there. So uh, yeah, it's um, going to be a busy time of the year. Um, the off season always is. And especially this, this stretch here between basically now and, and February um, when the second signing date comes. Um, so uh, in that spirit, well, you know, I, I think we can kind of move on pretty quickly from the season because I, um, I don't know, there's not a whole lot to say about the pit game other than Tyler Van Dyke starts. Um, and doesn't last very long getting re-injured and and um, and was it a mistake yeah um I mean yes. I, I think yes <laughs> I think both of us think the fact that you play him twice in the last month of the season and both times he doesn't even last a quarter I think uh before getting yeah. hurt again um yeah that mm-hmm. was a, a debacle and the whole game was kind of a debacle and the whole kind of last couple of months was, was kind of a debacle um so in, in that I guess that that gets us nicely. I have five key questions that will like kind of define Mario Cristobal's first off. I guess we can kind of say this is his first off season, first full off season here at Miami. Um, we're almost actually at a year though since he got hired, so he did have really most of the last off season to work. Um, so number one is just going to be you know, what the year one to year two jump for a coach should be a big one because you should be able to have come in and evaluated the talent evaluated what you did evaluated what this the program is like the community the culture all of that so what 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 will be the biggest things Mario Cristobal can learn from year one that I think is the biggest question that will define um this summer is what did he look at this or sorry this winter it will be what did he look at and say this needs to be different than what I did in year one um what what are your hunches about maybe what what, what, or what, what do you think he should according, have learned here? Well, I, I mean, according to Mario, it's, it's the, the talent. Yeah. The lack of talent. I mean, it, it, you know, he needed the, he needed the season to, uh, to evaluate yeah. his players or the, the players that were left to him. Some of them were his players and, and then could better, you know, decide what, what he needs going forward. Um, and I think he was, Maybe he was surprised. I know he was surprised. I think he he, he thought they would do better yeah. than they did. Uh, it, all the, the Mario fans are blaming the talent. Uh, the people who are not as much Mario fans are putting some of it on the coaches, which I think is fair. I mean, yeah. I you know, he has this zillion dollar, like I said, coaching staff with some of the best coaches, supposedly the country, uh, assistants and paying mm. them very well. Um, and you know, the offense was terrible. Is that all the players? I don't know. I, I, I was the talent that much worse than, than Mario, you know, thought or the four stars, this, this, these four stars are worse than other four stars yeah. in the country. I don't know. I, uh, but, um, you know, I, I think the coaching, I think some of this should be on the coaches and Mario keeps saying he's going to evaluate the coaching staff, but we have no, I, I, we're all talking about that. We're going to talk about that later. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be interesting because, um, so some of the, some of year one, I think is hard to judge because of the Tyler Van Dyke thing, which I I think I said last week or two weeks ago on the show, it almost feels like we've like under discussed it. Um, because, you know, obviously this guy was one of the best quarterbacks in the country, um, not so long ago. And, when he wasn't out there, Miami's offense was was terrible. And and I know the the argument kind of like that it didn't matter that much is the offense was mostly terrible even when he was in there. 
Um, although it was clearly getting better. They were very good. He was very good in that North Carolina game um, right before right. that was his uh, that and Virginia Tech also the, the last two games before he got injured. Although they still weren't scoring very well in either of those games, you should say, even though they were getting a lot of yards. Um, so I think it's going to be, you know, how hard is it to evaluate the offense right now when you didn't see what it looks like with Tyler Van Dyke? And I think that's the, the biggest question. I mean, clearly there are, I mean, I think he should come out saying we need to get a lot better at, well, there's a couple, I mean, I think he already knew the O-line needed to get better. I think the O-line, like it, it, like that, that his opinion on that hasn't, shouldn't have changed from year one. Um, I would hope the the one thing he realizes is, um, you know, even if I get, I get it, like I get, he doesn't want to run Rhett Lashley's offense. Um, I get that he wants to be this more power focused team. And I, and I know obviously when they, recruit the offensive line the way that he hopes they will and you know they already have one of their best offensive line classes ever coming in this year so the run game should get better but at the same time I mean the way college football is right now you need uh, a great quarterback and obviously he knows that you know he had Justin Herbert at Oregon like he's it's not like he doesn't value the quarterback position Um, but you need great wide receivers Um, you need guys who can create get get open and Obviously, like I think, you know, I think Xavier Restrepo, who obviously had was injured a lot of the year too, is a is a good contributor. But you you can't build an offense out of Xavier Restrepo's. And, and they went into the portal last year. They tried to get kind of it was shocking how you know they got Frank Ladson, who ended up being a starter, but a pretty average, mediocre, below average starter. Um, it, it just kind of felt like they didn't value that vertical threat or maybe he was really hoping that maybe he came in and saw Romello Brinson and Jacoby George and, and Brashard mm-hmm. Smith and was like one of these guys is going to break out like just based off what we saw in workouts maybe, all that he... kind of stuff um, yeah. but he's got to come in this year knowing that that is I think the single position on the field that I think needs to improve the most um, That's it's been kind like of excusable that. it's kind of excuse inexcusable because Miami produces more great wide receivers than pretty much anywhere in the country. Not recently. I well, mean, I'm saying like, South Florida. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Got you. They, they go to Alabama or Georgia usually or gotcha. Clemson or whatever, but yeah. Yeah. The Miami, because University of Miami has been struggling with receivers for years now. Yeah. Pretty much since and, I'm on, I mean, obviously Charleston Rambo was a record setter last year, but you know, right. he didn't get drafted. Um, I thought that, pretty much since Amon Richards, right? It's been like. Yeah, that's that's a shame. It kind of threw, it kind of screwed up, screwed up a lot for Miami. I think there's there's a great what if to be done about like what if Amon Richards had been able to play his whole career. Yeah, well, yeah, he he, it would have been very good for him. There's yeah. no doubt well, about yeah. that. He, he'd be gone in three years. And, yeah, but but would have maybe changed on, the Mark Richt era a lot. Yes, agree. I I I think Colby Young. Uh, I, I, we were very excited about him and I thought that he was going to continue the trajectory, mm-hmm. you know, when it, when he, when he first started. Yeah, his first, uh, basically oh, it was the North Carolina and then Virginia Tech, he went off and then went Duke, off. he was and good he was, against too. But then he, then all of a sudden he wasn't, he just, he, he, he wasn't catching as many passes. He didn't have as many yards. Uh, and I was a little bit surprised at that. Mm-hmm. I, uh, at that one, because that's the kind of receiver they need. They need a tall outside guy, uh, you know, as Brashard yeah. is, is, is really good and stuff. And he can do a lot of different things, um, but they, they need a big body. We keep saying that mm-hmm. we thought maybe Frank Ladson was, but he didn't, you know, it didn't end up being like we thought it would. So right. yeah, I agree. They, they need that and they need, and just like I always say, running backs, yeah, uh, running backs get injured all the time, and UM knows that now more than anyone. Um, and they, you know, Don Cheney's back, but you know, how's Don Cheney going to be? Right. I don't know. Uh, Tremonte Citizen is back, he never even played. He's supposed to be really good, but every year when they get these blue chip guys, we think they're going to be great, and you never know. Yeah, you can never uh, bank on it. Henry Parrish, uh, I don't, yeah, I, I don't. I'm not sure he's returning really. Uh, I'm not positive on him. And they, so they, they definitely need Jalen Knighton had his issues. Um, 
they they need to i think beef up the running back uh, or yeah. or make sure what they have is is good enough mm-hmm. on, on offense uh, I'm gonna did. steal. I'm gonna steal one other point from you that you said before we we started recording. When I, things Mario needs to learn um, is uh, a very expensive coaching staff can't buy you wins. <laughs> I, I think um, you you saw he, he kind of went for the all star approach, right? He went for the dream team approach, um, and you know, uh, obviously, like there's a lot of excuses you can make with the offense because of Tyler's injury. Um, and a lot of injuries, right? You know, Parrish missed time, Restrepo missed time. Um, a a lot of offensive linemen injuries. A lot of offensive um, linemen. But yeah. it just, you know, they kind of never, like they never found an identity uh, on either side of the ball. I think maybe on defense, their identity was the defensive line, right? It was just, we have all these guys, we're going to just keep coming at you with eight right. bodies, basically. Right. Um, but, you know, you you could kind of feel that it was a group that was thrown together for the most part right the only one you know like I I guess to get I think Gaddis and Mario overlapped at Alabama so there was some um some sort of relationship there but like it's not like Josh Gaddis and Frank Ponce have worked together or um you know Stephen Field and Gaddis or uh you know obviously Mirabal and Mario are are like this you know lockstep so um, and on defense, you know, Kevin Steele and, and Charlie Strong and, you know, Joe Salvea came from, from Oregon, but it's like, they, there was no, you know, they, they tried to, the whole season kind of felt like they were trying to jam a, a square peg into a round hole, right? They were, and I think part of that was by design a little bit for Mario. He wasn't going to say, um, he wasn't going to sacrifice long-term development for short-term victories, I think, right? He could have probably just come out and hired a spread offensive coordinator for a year and run pretty much what they were running last year and said, all right, we're going to do that. And then as I keep recruiting, we'll try to transition into my more power system. I think he wanted to establish his identity before he, um, you know, that was the top priority. It, it, you know, there was just, they just never did that. Right. They, they were awful running the ball and they were terrible throwing the ball until and they, no matter was, what, until those couple of games where they tried to spread it out a little bit more. Um, and yeah, a little, but they tried, they ran a Josh Gaddis. We knew it was going to be run, run, yeah. run, run. I, I kind of agree with you. I mean, Tyler was so good in that, in that up tempo, you know, that red Lashley. <laughs> he yeah. was so good. If you're getting wins, I don't know. I, I understand he was injured and that changed everything once he got injured but it did it did seem different right it looked different in the beginning of the season yeah i mean he was like he was terrible against middle tennessee like yeah i i mean yeah it, it was he was kind of you felt like he was being held back we wanted to see some some uh some bombs <laughs> and a lot of guys take it off and stuff and it wasn't i i don't it wasn't like that and mario keeps talking about uh how josh Caddis uh, was very successful. All the coaches he hired were have, have you know, you know, he was a Broyles Award winner. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, it just that doesn't mean that's going to work here. Right. That's the thing. It's and it obviously, you know, Mario is hiring guys for more than just their track. Like, just like this guy was good here. This guy was good here. Like, he does, in theory, have an idea, but like, it's like building a football team right you can't just stick a a power running back and a spread quarterback and a bunch of air raid offensive linemen and uh like the 10 best slot receivers in the country but no outside receivers you can't just put them all together and say they were all great where they were before they're going to be good here like it's, it's not how team building works um and obviously i think mario is a really good feel of roster building and team building and the types of people he wants at positions especially when you see it with the way he's recruiting the offensive line um not oh, yeah. just not just going after 10 five star tackles like get a couple star tackles get the best center in the country like he's got a really good feel for that and um i would like to see him have a better feel for how to put a coaching staff together and, and guys who come in with, you know, you don't want everyone to have the same, right? You don't want to just have a bunch of yes men around everyone agreeing with each other all the time. You want to have different 
uh, personalities and philosophies so they can push back against each other and question each other and make each other better. But like, like again, there was just like no cohesion um, really on either side. I mean, the, and it was the, always the communication different. was terrible on defense too much. Like, yeah, they're well, changing game plans each, all the time on well, offense. Each week it was different. So like with defense, you know, they couldn't, you know, they, let's say they did poorly against, against the run, mm -hmm. uh, you know, certain types of run and then uh and then they would do poorly against the you know the deep passes and then and whatever it was whatever it was they would fix you know they would fix for the next right. week they they had the penalty problem that's something different you know they had the penalty problem and then they were like plugging it. holes right like when you're plugging holes on a a leaking boat and it just squirts out somewhere else it was kind of like and that. the question the question is will he will he uh uh, dismiss any of the coaches uh I don't know I a lot of people said oh definitely Gaddis definitely I don't my gut is he does not excuse me get rid of Gaddis because he's he's pretty Mario is he has a plan as he tells us yeah. all the time he's got a plan and this is going to be a championship team he says eventually and and it doesn't happen overnight mm -hmm. so to me if he if he fires Josh Gaddis right away it's kind of it does show a little bit of like panic, right? I mean, I'd be shocked if the coaching staff comes back entirely intact, right? Like you go five and seven, heads roll right. a little bit, right? Um, even if it's position True. coaches and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I mean, it's again, I I hope you know you can't. I mean, how many times is like the All Star? Like I I think of the Eagles, the dream team team they had in like 2010 that was like terrible. Like you can't just do the dream team thing. You gotta you gotta have guys who clearly are going to work well together all that kind of stuff and i'm not saying the guys the coaches don't like each other or anything right but it's like these guys all come in with you know again it's the whole like jamming around square peg into a round hole like you just gotta the pieces have to fit it's a puzzle right like anything in, in building a football building a roster and the pieces clearly just didn't fit together this year and again like i think the injury stuff like is probably an underrated plot. Like if obviously, like if Tyler Van Dyke plays, they make a bowl game, right? They don't, they don't go five and seven. They they For probably sure. go six and six or seven and seven, seven and five, which is still disappointing. But we were the the tone is a lot different than if Miami is missing a bowl game for the first time since two thousand seven. Um, so, uh, you know, I think like like you said, is it a lock that Josh Gaddis is gone? Probably not because. Like, is it fair to judge Josh Gaddis off that year? I mean, I think you can judge him pretty harshly off the first four games of the year where the offense, where he had Tyler Van Dyke, um, had Xavier Restrepo for most of those games. I agree. And they still look terrible. Um, but yeah. again, like, as Mario pointed out, like the North Carolina and Virginia Tech game, they were kind of getting a little bit, you know, they weren't scoring, but the yards were back. Tyler was back to slinging it around. Um, obviously some younger guys were starting to step up those. We started to see Jakari, rank, the Jakari Brown wrinkle. Like they were going in the right direction before the Tyler injury. And I wouldn't be surprised if Mario was like, I want to see if, if Tyler comes back, which I think will maybe be the next thing to get to here. Right. Um, then what is this going to look like uh, moving forward? And then the other thing, I mean, I think Mario's whole philosophy is just like, I think the reason he wanted all these experienced coaches who have this track record is was more about player development than play calling or philosophy or scheme or anything like that. Uh, Cause he believes it's all talent, right? Like he's pretty open about that. Um, he believes, yeah, then why, I, he believes you I, just got to recruit your way out of this essentially. Right. That's his bottom line is what you just said and recruiting your way out of it includes the transfer portal. Right. So Which I don't I, think he handled that well last year. And that's an interesting thing because they hired well, Mario and Mario is known for being the best, one of the best high school recruiters in the country, but you can't win just by recruiting high school anymore. And they only really got like, I'd say like two studs out of the portal this year for, and if you come in and you're like, this team needs a full roster overhaul, you kind of got to do more than that. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I agree with that. Um, and uh, I mean, the, yeah, he got, he had a lot of, what did he have? 11? He had a lot of transfers. Yeah, he had a lot. And I would say the only uh, guys who were like fantastic were Mesador and Parrish probably, right? Yeah, Parrish was really good. Mesador, uh, 
have Daryl Jackson. Oh yeah, Daryl Jackson. Sorry, I forgot about yeah. Daryl Jackson. Yeah. Daryl Jackson, really good. Um, and I mean, and the rest was all you know, like the getting lads in instead of like a guy who could be a real number one or number two receiver. That's a miss. Um, the offensive thought, linemen they got, neither of those guys were very, you know, didn't play very much. Um, and the, that's funny because Justice Oluwashan, am I saying yeah. it right? Oluwashan, he, he was injured, right, for the last several games. Uh-huh. And he was a guy that Manny Diaz got. Yeah, it was a Garen Justice pickup, really, yeah. Yeah, uh, Garen Justice. And he was good. He ended up being okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, some of the I – thought, I thought Jake – Lichtenstein would be uh, yeah I mean I'd say he, he, more of a he, he, Moultrie Agude Agude started but those three this were all kind of like solid like rotational yeah. guys I mean Caleb Johnson we thought was going to come in and start at linebacker and that never really materialized until some injuries happened right um, so yeah. you know they ended up being in sacks they ended up being uh very well, high in the country well I, actually it's not ended up until the season's totally over we won't know exactly right. but um as of last finish the regular week, season finish there they finished the regular season and it's again it's going to be different now because uh, as to other teams play but 18 18 uh no they finished ninth David yeah. in sacks. Yeah. So I mean ninth in the nation and 18th in tackles for loss. So I mean that rotation. The defensive line is definitely the bright the, spot. The defensive line was still did a really good job. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's totally good job. Um the offense, yikes. So and turnovers, oh my God. Turnover margin, they were 90th, uh 90th in the country. And, and that's with the, that's with a guy who led the country in interceptions. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. And then, t- and then turnovers lost. Listen to this. Turnovers lost out of 131 teams. They were 124th in turnovers lost and only 20th in turnovers gained. So they yeah. really, yeah, they really were not good in that area. Uh, again, great in kicking, in the kicking game. Yeah, Excellent. both kicking, punting. Yep. Yeah. They're going to lose one of those guys. So, yeah. Speaking of uh, losing, guys, uh, as I said, our next topic here is going to be kind of Tyler Van Dyke heavy because it's it's who can they not afford to lose? Um, and that list, I think, Tyler. has to start with Tyler Van Dyke, yeah. even though Tyler. he didn't play that much this year. You saw this year how valuable he was by him not playing this year. I know. I think after the Georgia Tech game, a lot of people were like, "Oh, let's just like you know, let's new era. Let's see what Jakari can do." And then you see him against Clemson and against. Yeah. Oh uh, no! Everybody was high on Jakari Brown after, uh, after, and I'm still Jordan. high on Jakari Brown. I think he can be a very good quarterback. Um, but Tyler Van Dyke, when he's healthy, is one of the best quarterbacks in the country, as we saw, I think, against North Carolina and against Virginia Tech. Um, and we should say uh, they're uh, Kane Sport. Uh, our friends over at Kane Sport reported mm-hmm. the other day that. The, Tyler Van Dyke uh, is expected to return. I don't know what the exact phrasing they used was. He said um, that they've uh, that Tyler and his family have informed the Miami Hurricanes. Have informed Miami. They will not um, enter the transfer portal or the, or the draft, which I, we have not been able to confirm that. We both kind of have feelings about that. And I had a feeling just listening to Mario, yeah. I, like towards the very, very end when we were asking, well, what about Tyler? Have you heard? And he says, well, you know, we'll have. We'll let you, we'll have it announcements on that, you know, soon enough, something like that. Whatever he said, I, I came back to you and I said, I have this feeling. Yeah. It's good news for them. Um, yeah. Which we certainly don't, don't have any, we certainly do not have any indication from sources or anything behind the scenes that he has any plans of going pro. So it, it sounds, you know, we, yeah. we haven't confirmed Kane Sports report, but we feel very confident that that is uh, accurate as they report it. And maybe, maybe they're going to have the same. I guess it almost I like Tyler. I think he's had already how many offensive coordinators? I mean, um, he's well, really just two. Well, I mean, his freshman had, year was Enos's. No, yeah, just two. He had get he just had Lashley for two years and then Lashley uh, two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think he wanted. I I think that would be one reason not to go somewhere else. And you know, people are saying he should go to SMU. And stuff, but I, I don't, I, 
you know, you want you still want to be in a program that has, you know, the better, the best athletes, I think. Yeah. And I mean, I, he clearly likes Miami, right. He committed to Miami like yes. during like not very good times. Um, they, they kind of like, I don't want to say they like took a shot on him because he was a four-star recruit, but it's not like it was Alabama and Georgia and Michigan and Ohio state all fighting for him. Yeah. Like they, they beat out it's Syracuse and Wisconsin and uh, you know, like big 10 Northeast type schools to get him um and you know he clearly uh you know Xavier Shep is going to be back like they're really close um and yes. you know we, he's seen what being a successful quarterback at Miami can mean right like he's seen the way you vault up these track boards and stuff like that to me it was always going to be uh I, I I for him I always thought it was either going to be he's going to still hear the NFL feedback that he could be like a day two pick and decide to go pro, or he was going to come back to so. Miami. Um, yeah. So I, that's I, the one thing is like, it seems so early that he would have made up his mind where, you know, if a bunch of NFL teams start reaching out to him and uh, kind of put the feelers out there that he's going to still be a high pick, then um, I wouldn't be shocked if he left, but at this point, like it seems pretty, pretty likely he's going to be back in Miami next year. I don't think so. I, because he, I think he, everybody thought he was a a possible first rounder after last season, which Mm -hmm. was understandable, but that injury, let's face it. I mean, he's a quarterback, right? It's a throwing shoulder. It's his throwing arm. And it kept coming back, right? It's not like he got over it and looked great. Oh no! And here's the thing. And you know, the defenses, you know, they slam him to the ground. That one guy pushed on his arm when he got up and at at the uh, Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh guy, I mean, you know, it's his shoulder. Okay. And, and, and he, and he was really hurt and he wasn't, I, I, I still, I know UM said he was fine and I don't think they're lying. Okay. Saying he wasn't fine. He was cleared, but I, somebody had to realize that that's going to happen and he should, they should not let him play and just let him. Especially that. I mean, we talked about the Florida state one where it's not even a contact injury. Like I have a hard time believing that he was a hundred percent ready to go when he just throws the ball away and all of a sudden he's grabbing his arm. Yeah. I, I just, uh, he needs some really good rehab, and and then um, I'm sure if if he did tell them he's coming back, I'm sure there were long conversations about um, I don't know about the although a kid can't dictate, but the type of offense and blah blah blah. I think mm-hmm. I, you know for his sake and his family's sake, I'm sure they did a lot of research. So yeah, uh, anyone else you feel like they definitely can't lose this? I mean, there's like some like. Can't lose Cam Kinchins, but they're not at risk of losing Cam. Yeah, they're not gonna... right. Like, is there anyone um, who yeah. they don't have a whole lot of draft prospects this year? Mesador is eligible. Obviously, Zion Nelson is eligible after missing the whole year. Yeah, but he um, won't. There's no. I, I, I have a hard time seeing that. No Although he's, he's getting going. old, but yes. Yeah, there's no way. No way. Yeah, because if he, he has a if he has a health if he has a healthy season and plays well, he'll be a. Well, you know, he might probably won't be a first round pick at this point, but you um, every time people say they're going to get drafted high, they, if they're lucky, yeah. they get in the sixth round, seventh round. I mean, I, I, in, in recent years, um, yeah. I think, I think they really need to bring Mesador back. I think, let's see here. They're getting, they have so many Jalen Rivers, obviously he's young. He'll be back. Um, defensive line. I, they have some young good to no, I, I, none of those guys are going to transfer. Leonard Taylor's not transferring. No, yeah, yeah. But uh, James. I don't Williams, expect. You never know, but yeah. They need some linebackers. I, they, they, I mean. Well, all right. Then let's get to our next yeah, topic, then, I mean, which is what transfers yeah. do they need? Um, and to me, there's two. We talked a lot about wide receiver. I think they definitely need receivers. You mentioned yes. running back. They either need another high school recruit. They don't have a running back committed or a portal guy. They just need to go a little bit deeper there. Um, even though I think all those running backs will be back. Um, although, as you mentioned, Parrish is <clears throat> Parrish is draft eligible. Um, the rest of the list, I think it's it's linebacker and corner uh, defensive back. Um, safety, obviously, they lose Avante Williams to the transfer portal. Right. They lose Al Blades Jr. to the transfer portal. A surprise. Um, I was I was sad about that. Yeah, uh, Rivals reported that Tyreek Stevenson is going to enter the draft, which uh, jives with a lot of what I've heard. My understanding is 
not anything official yet, but the feedback he is getting is positive enough that he is expecting to enter the draft. Um, I think so, he should come back, by the way. I, I, just, I, I think he should come back. He's getting I, old. I, what? He's getting a little old, but yeah. Whatever. I don't know. You think everybody's old. I don't think, he, I don't know. Whatever. Everything's relative, I guess. I, I Well, he's been in college for four years already is what I'm saying. Yeah, but he's, yeah, but. And he's really good. I've, we liked him. That big body, we really yeah. liked My him. My question, I mean, you whenever you say should, a guy should come back, it's like how much higher are they really going to climb on a draft board by coming back for they another year? A lot higher. I guess. You don't think so? I, I don't think know, a lot 23-year-old cornerback, I think it's it's hard for that guy to climb too much. I don't but. know. I, I, I wish he would come back, but yeah, uh, but they, so they need they need linebackers as we saw. Wesley Besaint looks awesome, um, but they got oh, yeah. kind of nothing else right. around him with Steed and Caleb Johnson both going out. Corey Flag uh, will be back, obviously, and that's a good, useful piece. But they they badly need some depth there, and then the secondary losing DJ Ivy and Tyreek Stevenson, those are your top two cornerbacks. Um, oh yeah, they need corners. They really need really need corners, and they've got. Um, Obviously, Cormani McLean, a five-star cornerback coming in. I'm sure he'll play next year. Got some other good young guys. Kamari Rogers was a highly recruited guy last year. Um, so I, I, I think, yeah, those those are the two spots. They, they need to get a lot better there. And those are, I kind of, I mean, we said that the defense was all about the D-line. The rest of the unit was, and the safeties are good, but the rest of the unit was like, you know, you could kind of see the glaring holes everywhere else at various points throughout the year. I think that I think the key, the key, key that we talked about is Tyler coming back. Yes, that, if that, Tyler didn't come back, David. If 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 that if he doesn't come back, um, and I've got to believe that what Gary wrote, Gary Furman wrote is is correct, or he would have written it. Uh-huh. But if if uh, if he didn't, if he doesn't come back, then you could then you you we have to talk about Jake Garcia. And Jakari and, uh, Brown, yeah. And who who was clearly the number two behind this freshman, Jakari. And yet, I don't know if coaches reconsidered after they realized that Jakari needs to improve a whole lot in his passing. Yeah. Um, they would be in big trouble. Yeah, with Tyler back, back, with Tyler back, they should be a bowl team and they should be yes. competitive in the AF, in the ACC. If he's gone, I mean, it would be another struggling to get a bowl unless they unless those quarterbacks I mean we really like both those quarterbacks and quarterbacks improve a lot from year to year but they would have to I want to see more I I, I'm Jakari who was such a really good athlete a smart kid and uh god he's great runner and uh, agile and all that I mean you know big body he just um I he he needs he needs to improve significantly on the passing game and his timing I mean, he had he had enough time that he could have done a little better. Yeah, I think. yeah. It was a, they were one dimensional, obviously, when the, he was out there offensively. Um, last so, last big question I have here is how much will recruiting help? And and long term, obviously, it should help a lot. Um, question is short term. Like if your whole thing is you're gonna rebuild the program through recruiting high school ranks, uh, you know they've got a good recruiting class coming in next year. They just got flipped a. Uh, Flipped the defensive end from Michigan the other day. They're up to number nine in the country. Uh, defensive lineman Collins A. Champong, six seven from Ghana, um, former basketball player. Um, you know they've got. You look through the the list of guys they've got here, and it is two five star recruits, five top one hundred recruits. Um, like they've got a list of guys that are going to come in and help. Right, I mentioned McLean should help at corner. Uh, Francis Mangoa especially if Zion doesn't come back, I think we'll help at uh, tackle. Um, and certainly, you know, should he's one of the best offensive line recruits Miami's ever landed. You would hope he helps you in some capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, some good receivers, not the big guys though. Like I love Nathaniel Joseph slot receiver for medicine, but he's five, eight, um, like another slot receiver. Yeah, really. I think he'll be a good return man for them. Um that, that's probably how it'll help most in year one. Um, some good defensive linemen, Jaden Wayne. I mentioned Collins, Asian Pong, Malik Bryant, freshman linebacker, who you know, I wouldn't be shocked if he's kind of this year's West, the next year's Wesley Besaint. Uh, a lot of tight ends, including Riley Williams, that'll help hopefully alleviate the loss of Will Mallory a little bit. Uh, Robert Stafford, a cornerback from Melbourne, uh, should help again fill some of that depth at corner. 
But again, these are all guys like how many of those guys can you really bank on being, you know, you only get a Wesley the Saint or a freshman Cam Kitchens or freshman James. Like you only get a handful of those every year usually. So right. um, it'll be interesting to see how many of those guys can kept come and step in. And so it's going to be about adding those recruits every year until you build it up. But that takes some time. Okay, uh, I think we are just about out of time. Uh, so we will uh, head out for now. Um, we'll be back though uh, later on this month, maybe next week. We'll see. There's obviously <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of news is always happening on the Miami beat these days, as I mentioned. It's kind of the busiest time of the year, even though we are in the off season. Uh, early yeah, signing. Early, period early is signing. One, two. When is it? December? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 days away uh, as we're recording yeah. now. So we are getting close. Uh, we should probably talk when we finish about our plans for signing day because uh, we got to start working on that. Um, you can follow Susan on Twitter at S. Miller Degnan. Um, she is back from Disney World and back on the Miami <laughs> beat now. Um, no, Orange Bowl, yeah. we get orange. We got to figure out who's going to be in the Orange Bowl on, on Sunday. I think it's going to be Clemson. Well, it's the ACC winner, right? So it's either yeah. Clemson or North Carolina. And then yeah, I think it's going to be probably game. Clemson. Yeah, well, they're favorite in the game, definitely. So. I think they're saying Clemson, Ohio State possibly fun if it's clemson it could be clemson alabama like there's a couple that could be fun um yeah for sure pretty big um uh you can follow me on twitter at db wilson too um damn all over the place like always and a lot of recruiting coverage since we are in that season uh for miami um i'll be out at uh at traz tonight to check out a couple of big miami targets uh miami central playing against uh st pete lakewood um Ruben Bain kind of, to me, still the number one guy Miami's got to add between now and signing. They can't let those guys go to Auburn or whatever. You, you got to keep no, those guys David, home. Have, I know we got, we have less than a minute here, but before we get disconnected, but uh, they're, they'll have a, a, the brunt of their class, right? And the early period. I think so. Yes. Yeah. They'll, you know, they're, they'll always add a couple, but yeah, for the most part, we'll, we'll be done in the next couple of weeks here. Um, anyways, uh, thanks as always for listening and we will uh, talk to you guys later on.